channel I'm in Bath at the University of Bath for the ASAP 40th anniversary uh, paranormal conference we're about to go have a big gala um, evening at a fantastic pub in Bath itself we've had a real problem getting into our apartments our little uh, flats because the keys weren't working the electronic keys weren't working the keys to the actual um, flat here which is really nice very basic but very nice like student accommodation uh, works fine but in getting into the little hallway doesn't so we've been waiting for that so um yeah it's gonna be a fun fun uh, evening god i need a drink um so yeah come and join us for the evening and also uh some of the paranormal talks tomorrow i'm my talk is right at the end of the day quarter past five i'll try and video it if i can uh but it's gonna be fun let's go vampirism people just simply remark I've moved from one blood-sucking business <laughs> to another. That was very interesting ghost. I've been quite obsessed with the idea of belief full stop really I think. I think it stems from growing up in an entirely belief-free household. I was brought up by a mum who'd been brought up Catholic, renounced and become an atheist and I had no belief at all in my childhood apart from when we'd go to my grandparents I would see pictures of Jesus and books about the Pope. And I was fascinated by the idea I was missing out on something. There was some layer of human existence and experience that I wasn't tapping into. And some people would have found God, and I found ghosts. And I just stayed hooked on ghosts, and I kept trying to find a way to work it into my work. And I spent years writing comedy and writing all sorts of making documentaries. And then, a few years ago, a friend of mine said to me that she had seen a ghost. 
And I remember looking at her and going like, wow, and, and thinking like, how would all the people in our friendship group react to this moment? And I knew that there would be people there who would believe her, and people there who would uh, absolutely not believe her, people who would be annoyed by her, people who would kind of question her sanity. And I thought, what about if you put that in the context of a relationship? If you have two people in a relationship, one of whom believes in ghosts, one of whom refuses to, sorry, one of whom believes there is a ghost in her house, and one of whom refuses to even, ex you know, countenance the existence of ghosts. And that was the idea for my play. And that, how does that exist in a world of, you know, of, of flat screen TVs and Amazon Alexas and mobile phones, all that sort of thing? And, and uh, I think it's really interesting that tech is forcing us more and more to be solitary. You know, like, when we play computer games, we play them with other people in other houses now. We don't sit on the sofa and play them more. You know, like, we communicate through social media. We, you know, like, particularly during lockdown, we become more and more solitary. And anecdotally, ghost sightings have really risen during lockdown. I, I think I, I would see a, a real... That solitary has been a real factor here, I think. And, and again, you can look at it from kind of believer or sceptic points of view, because, you know, is it that we're living in these houses that we didn't actually used to spend much time in. You know, you'd go out of the house, come back at the end of the day. we have been trapped in them, and, and these kind of places that were familiar take on this kind of slightly sinister, claustrophobic feel. about this wonderful woman. Before joining Buckinghamshire New University in 2019, she was a lecturer in the sociology department at the University of Northampton. Something that I've been interested in um, since childhood, the, the usual kind of story, you know, yes, Ghostbusters, yes, X-Files, yes, Buffy, all of that kind of stuff. Was interested, a couple of my own kind of unexplained experiences. Um, but yeah, what, what makes people take this further? that they want to do it. The comments from the um, interview saying that, you know, there's this idea that um, I have an open mind, but I, I was taught to be skeptic by people that they've um, had experiences with doing um, investigations as they were growing up. So um, participant three says, I've been doing it for over 40 years. He was taught to be a very skeptical paranormal investigator. Um, participant nine says, well, I have a skeptical mind, but I have to admit, I'm a believer because I've been doing this so long I've seen things that tell me otherwise, that there is something else going on. As they kindly arrange the technology, the subject, oh, lovely, naughty. Subject that I'm talking about is one that's come up a fair bit in the course of the conference, which is the idea of possession. Not that you just don't have the business of seeing ghosts or hearing them, experience them, but they can also, and some quite nasty ones, can actually inhabit one, actually go into the physical self. Now, we talk about the term possession quite generally in society. People are possessed by emotions, possessed by a passion. So, yeah, Nikola Tesla, um, I mean, was an amazing genius, and uh, you'll, you'll see that... Um, He's kind of very underrated and kind of underlay. I mean, when I was a kid, we just really didn't hear about him at all. So, uh, Nikola Tesla was born on the 10th of July, 1856, in Smijan, uh, the Austrian Empire, now Croatia. Um, but he's from a Serbian background, so he's usually thought of as Serbian. Um, he was educated at Graz University of Technology, and he dropped out. He's known for alternating current, high voltage, high frequency power experiments, significant designs, uh, the AC motor, so all your electric cars and the Teslas, of course, um, oh, all to him. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'm looking for more land than So, a bit delicate after last night. Mm -hmm. Who put rum in my wine? You put the rum Did in I? your own red wine, Mark. Nobody else was responsible for that. I don't think, I don't think I've really had. I don't think I've had red wine uh, rum before. Um, it's yeah. generally not mixed. No, it's not. <laughs> they don't go together at all. Um, some fascinating to um, uh, topics we've covered already in the uh, conference hall. Really, really interesting. So I'm going to go back for a few more, and then I'll me rounding off the day. Have a laugh.
got some paracetamol? No, thank you. to get some fresh air some fascinating talks really are fascinating um, get a bit nervous about my one later on but hey I've done it before a few years ago um, oh God, a bit windy it's a windy down in Bath um, we love university campus this actually um, I never went to university so I can't really compare it um, but it's a very very nice uni uh, yeah, it's a really good event so far. So, um, yeah, let's go in and see a few more talks. Thank you very much. Um, this uh, talk represents a kind of ongoing interest of mine. Um, I spent most of my early journey into the research and going with this Richards community, which is far more uplifting stories, I have to say. But I've always been drawn by the kind of more sinister side of hauntings. And even though it does lead to some sleepless nights, um, I do kind of like a malevolent ghost in some ways. Um, and some, some asylums did indeed kind of have this idea about how can we create spaces effectively to make people well. Does anybody recognise the picture at the top? Have we see that shortlist series? Yeah, Bedlam it's called. With its glamorous, glamorous cast. Um, and um, so the point is, while we associate the asylum largely with the Victorian era, and certainly that's when you see most of the buildings. Are we ready to roll? Oh, yay! Awesome. Oh, I've got one. Oh, yes, yeah, technology. Is mm. All right, Peter Laws is an author, journalist, film critic, and public speaker. He is the creator of Creepy Cove Community Church podcast, and also the Matt Hunter novel series. The fourth, Possessed, was published in February 2020. He is an ordained reverend and a fascination for the macabre. He writes a monthly column for the Fortean Times. He writes and hosts two popular non-fiction podcasts, Frightful and Our Curious Past. Good to be with you once again, uh, talking about a topic which I find pretty fascinating. Um, when people, basically, when people hear that I'm I'm an ordained church minister. They tend to always follow up that question with, uh, it, we brought up in a religious family. They kind of assume that I had a kind of Christian religious background, but I didn't, not at all. In fact, um, I never went to church at Christmas or Easter. It just wasn't part of my, my world, my family's world. <laughs> to be honest, right, when I was um, a teenager, when I was, this is a picture of me when I was like 14. This is a still from uh, a home movie I made called The Pumpkin Man, which is like a horror film. It's on YouTube, you should check it out, it's, it's, it's <laughs> disgraceful. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and um, at the time I had real like sort of cosmic issues with Christians. And I, I was in a band, I started a little band called Creatures of the Night. And the bits in between the talks and just having a drink at night and doing crazy things together, that's the stuff really that is very meaningful. Because you're among people who get you. You're among people who you feel, they understand me. You know, you can talk about like demonic possession to like your friends and colleagues and they can be like, huh? Like, what? Why? They can be like that. A little while ago, I was at a party with my wife and um, I went to the toilet and as I was coming back to the t from the toilet, she stopped me in the corridor, in the hallway, and she said, can you just stop talking about poltergeists? So <laughs> <laughs> why? scared. Can you not see they're scared? And I was like, yeah, I know, it's not great. Um, it's just, no, no, no. <laughs> Gentlemen, pass the microphone, which is very lucky, because we are going to be talking. Uh, it's unfortunate, but <coughs> Dr. Jack Hunter was unable to join us, so in a change to the advertised schedule, and at the last moment, Dr. Paul Lee has jumped in. Many of you will have heard of Paul. He is, was born in Nigeria on Halloween 1971. Um, he holds a first class BSc in physics from Southampton and a doctorate in nuclear physics from York. And despite a few conflicts by the university and whatever, I think we all agree it's been a wonderful time. 
So can we please give Chris a round of applause? Uh, she decided to branch out on her own as an independent paranormal investigator and access paranormal was born. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a national speaker, a featured author and podcaster, as well as being a, tra a qualified trainer, assessor, who studied with the Ryan Institute and the School of Parapsychology. She's a member of the Society for Psychical Research, the Ghost Club and ASA, and currently lives in London, in the UK. I didn't know that. I can stalk you now. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Beth Darlington. Thank you. Um, for me, I'm uh, not a trained psychologist. I'm not, I don't have any academic background whatsoever. Um, I'm, de I'm somebody who is uh, a mental health first aider, and I'm part of the mental health committee at my work. So I do have an actual interest within psychology, mental health. But just to let you know, I'm not a, 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 any academic background or psychologist professionally in any way, shape, or form. So the information I'm providing today is actually the information I'd be able to research and find for myself. It's a piece of, you could say it's a point of view. Which is what's myself. My name is Chris Gielander. I live in Nottingham, the centre of all kind of weird and wonderful things in the centre of the country. So uh, I'm a member of ASA, a member of uh, S, the AASRA as well, which is the Archaeology, Astronautics and SETI Research, Research Association. I need to kind of look at ancient alien stuff as well, but that, that's more of a, a fun uh, side project for myself. I present a podcast called Our Curious World, where I spent to many of our wonderful people here today that have an interest in the weird and the wonderful and the strange and unusual things that happen in our world. So, one of the curious things that happened in my part of the world is this case. And it's called the Thunderbolt Incident, and I've deliberately named it so as uh, not to give it a UFO connotation. Because I don't believe it is that, despite the fact that it is perhaps a really, really deep, interesting UFO topic. So, um, I guess we haven't really had many UFO topics of discussion here today. So this particular photo here is taken over Kirkby and Ashfield. Kirkby and Ashfield is located between Nottingham and Mansfield, and this was taken back in October 2020. So what we have here, 1.30 a.m., it is November the 12th, and it's 1987. So what we have is multiple reports of lights in the sky. There's an airborne object that is seen struggling level, to, is struggling to keep level to the ground. It's seen bobbing and weaving, uh, following the natural lay of the hilled land of Kirkby and Ashfield. So, ladies and gentlemen, we all know Robert. Thank you very much for being here. Right, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. And the back? Yes. Excellent. Right, here we go. This is the five phases of the British UFO experience. British sightings, British sighting accounts encompass the total, total spectrum of UFO events in Portland Hill Square, from humble lights in the sky, car stops, Physical trade cases to abduction. We've got to thank Nora for organising this. You've done so much, haven't you? You must thank be you. absolutely knackered. I am very tired, oh, but, but I've got a lovely team of people behind you've me. You've got some. It's been a really good day. Yeah. Really, really good I've day. Got Becky, CJ, Caroline, Trinity, Bill, Silver, Robert, support, yeah. Dee, and they're all wonderful people, oh, wonderful. and they've helped so much. Yeah. Work very yeah. hard as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. I've worked with Nori for since about 2007, haven't I? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. why I first met her on an event. Says, Come yes. along and film this. All right, okay. But yeah, thank you. You've done really well. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming along and speaking. You're, to us. Very, welcome. You're very welcome. Maybe you'd like to come there next year. I, I would love to come back next year because then I'll be. I've got another subject I'd like to talk about, which is the unexplained phenomena of Wiltshire. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I've got a lot of data that's not well known. Mm -hmm. That'd so, be good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. 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 I'm a bit of an actor, so I, I'm, I'm projecting at the same time. I don't think this is actually... Yeah, I can hear this already. Okay. Uh, so, my name is Mark English. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Not a great successful YouTuber or anything. Uh, I've been investigating the paranormal since about 1991, where we started off doing crop circles in Wiltshire, and got into sort of this ghost and spirit side around 2000, 2001. Now, what I'm going to say is now, what did they see? Okay. Do you saw an apparition? And we all pretty much know what an apparition is. Either an apparition, would you all agree, an apparition is probably a recording of some past or future event. Now, if you did see an apparition, that's not really necessarily proof of the afterlife. It's a recording. But also, if it's a recording, I think CJ said something like this earlier on, which I, I totally agree with. No. Does 
that apparition have mass? Because it needs photons of light for you to be able to see that apparition ahead of you. The paranormal covers such a wide area. Um, you can't just say you don't believe in the paranormal. This is all matter. This is not everything, is it? Our vision, we only see, now I hope I'm going to get this right, 0.000.35% of the infrared spectrum. Okay, that's nothing. That's almost less than 1%. This is the best we could do. So, <laughs> Nori, next year, what, what are the dates for next year? The 2nd of September. Um, we, we are uh, booked here. For two days? For two days, yes. So, get ready I even now. Hopefully we'll have some hot water as well. <laughs> and gazebos for you to sleep in if your room's double booked. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so we will, be, we will be ready. They might actually also push <coughs> you to hold sea apparitions. So thank you ever so much to our conference team, all our assistants, and to Becky, who has done so much to help over the last few days. So much, I'm going to shut up. Go out and experiment. Don't believe anything anyone tells you. Experiment. Test everything. All right. Thanks very much. Good night. So that's the end of the ASAP conference here at the University of Bath for 2022. It's been a really, really, really good conference. Some fantastic speakers and everything here. Um, so yeah, I'm heading back now to Surrey. Um, I think my speech went all right. Um, I didn't do it going for too long because I think everyone would get a little bit tired. Uh, but some fascinating talkers over the weekend. Uh, so if you like this video, please like, subscribe, all the normal stuff. And we'll see you next time. Take care.